Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm David. Just want to start by apologising for not uploading for I think it's been four months since I last uploaded a video. Uh, today's video is just going to try and explain where I've been, what I've been up to, um, and it's going to break down into three parts really. Uh, so first of all, where have I been? <laughs> Here's a clue. I've been up to some different hobbies and things. It's been the summer, I've been out and about and doing things. And I also got a little bit burnt out from the railway uh, and just spending money on it to be honest. Um, but I've got that mojo back a little bit now, so I thought I'll tell you what I've been up to. So what have I been up to on the railway? A little bit of a spoiler there. I've started the very first baseboard for this future layout. And then speaking of the future layout, what are the plans for the future layout? So yeah, we're going to delve into the track plans. You can see it's changed quite a bit there, uh, to be honest. The TMD is probably a lot more realistic than it was when I showed you, I think it was six months ago, I showed you a track plan. Um, and just in general, it's it's much, much larger than it was because uh, I thought it's going to be my dream layout. Um, I might as well make it a bit bigger. So, yeah, basically, I, as I've told you into previous videos, uh, my work, I've started my career properly, um, which means I don't really have loads of times for hobbies. Um, and when I do, it's hard to get the space now, really, to do the railway stuff. Um, no longer have the flat with my partner and um, we moved out of there because she graduated university and um, it was pointless us paying full price for a flat when I can live at work and she can live with her parents until she starts her career and then she'll also be living at work. Um, so yeah, basically I don't have the space for the railway unless I'm visiting my parents and obviously as I've said before, they've moved away from Shropshire now uh, and they're now in sunny Suffolk where they're retiring. Uh, so yeah, much harder for me to do the railway stuff. I did, however, do some things, and I'll show you those in a minute. Obviously, I was working on that TMD diorama. I was collecting rolling stock. Um, I had some pre-orders in for locos and things, uh, but basically, I just got burnt out with railways in general. Uh, I cancelled my pre-orders because I couldn't really see the point in spending hundreds of pounds on locos that I'm not going to be able to use for years. Um, I have just actually renewed a pre-order on an Acura Scale Class 50. Uh, I've wanted one for a while. I, I do want an Acura Scale Class 37 as well but we'll see um i think the one i want is coming out in the january 2024 tranche uh so yeah i might get that one anyway really turned away from the railway stuff for a little bit um i did do some stuff and you'll see that in a moment but my main focus to be honest was i went back to building drones uh something i used to do years ago uh but i got back into building little racing drones and, and here's one um that i built over the summer had great fun flying that round, crashing it. Um, cost a fortune, though, to build those and race those uh, with the first person stuff. Um, yeah, really good hobby, actually. I really, really enjoyed my summer, well, crashing the drones. Um, yeah, I also got myself a new videography drone, and I got back into my sort of drone photography and videography. I think I've showed some drone footage of railways on here before, uh, so I might do that again. Uh, but yeah, I just got back into flying the drones and spending money on that. And I don't really have the time or cash for the railways. So yeah, that's where I've really been, to be honest. I got burnt out from the railways uh, and focused on other hobbies and had a good summer. Um, but as the summer's drawing to a close, um, I also spent some time with my parents, which meant I had access to all my other stuff. And I got back into the hobby. Um, <laughs> this hobby comes and goes and it's very much uh, come back again and I have spent a load more time and money on investing in the start of the future layout. Um, so yeah, so we'll get onto that shortly. But first I'll just talk to you about what I've been up to uh, both before I sort of turned away from the railways and now when I've come back I'll show you what I've done in more recent times. So just when I was uploading my last videos uh, you'll have seen I was weathering some locomotives and that's because I've been expanding my rolling stock and uh, locomotive fleet. I've been doing a lot of research, trying to work out some fixed rakes of wagons and coaches based on realistic trains from the 60s and very early 70s. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've been collecting, here's some examples of, this is a weathered parcels wagon uh, from eBay. I've been buying some pre-weathered stuff. I really do like some of the stuff that's out there, uh, sort of pre-weathered. Uh, and I've also been doing some work uh, myself. Here you can see a 16 ton mineral wagon, I think. Yeah, 16 tons. Uh, that's pre weathered. And then what I've been doing as well is going around and adding hunk couplings. So, my idea is anything that's in a fixed rake will have hunk couplings joining it together. 
just for ease of um, sort of taking it on and off the layout or putting it in and out of storage until I have a layout, which will be a few years yet. Uh, so yeah, I've been going around putting hunk couplings on things and then KD couplings are going on all my locos, the ends of fixed rakes, and anything that I think will be shunted around is getting KD couplings as well. So yeah, so I've been looking into rolling stock and there'll be a video coming out on that in the future too. And as you've seen, I've been weathering locos. So this is a class 20 that I actually got on eBay. I upgraded the speakers in there, which I think I've got some footage of and I can't remember if I've shown you or not. So that could be in a future video. Uh, but then I also did a custom repaint on this based on a photograph of a class 20 I saw, uh, which had a single blue door where obviously the parts were starting to be painted in the British Rail corporate blue color. And I'm assuming they couldn't get a green door to install. And here you can see my nice array of diesels that I'm starting to collect and weather up. Okay, so the other thing that I had been working on uh, in some previous videos, and you'll see some future videos on these too, I've got some footage filmed on the TMD diorama. So I finished laying all of the track and the cork, got that all glued down, uh, weathered all the track. I've also now added the concrete hard standing out there, um, and I've started work on the scenery as well. So there will be a part two video coming out on this. I also added a lot of detail to the inside of the Backman shed as well. I 3D printed some roof trusses and added some LED lighting. Uh, and I'm really, really happy with how that's looking. For the rest of the layout as well, um, well, I say layout, for the rest of that diorama, um, I custom ordered a MDF sort of box for it to go in, a little lighting box. And I've painted on some clouds there and I started adding a back scene. And all of this will be covered in much more detail in a future video. Okay then, so this is around the point uh, that I actually sort of burnt out from the hobby and stopped doing it so much. Uh, but in the background, I was doing some, still doing some things here and there, which wasn't uploading to YouTube. I wasn't uploading to RM Web. Um, if you don't follow me on RM Web, uh, go check it out. It's Horse A Railway Modeler, uh, just the same as YouTube. And you get some more regular updates on there as well. Uh, but anyway, I turned my back on the hobby for a little bit, except for planning, really. Um, so this is the track plan I worked on, and we'll talk about this in much more detail in a minute. Uh, but to begin with, I really was just planning this for the future. Um, it came to this summer, though, and I had a week planned at my parents' house. Uh, we were going to get out to all sorts. I was going to show my girlfriend round sort of where my family live in Suffolk. Um, but unfortunately, my dad had to get a knee replacement that week. It's been on the books for years, to be honest. He's needed this knee replacement Uh but it just meant our plans kind of changed a lot and it meant we we're all going to be spending much more time in the house. So I thought, I know what I can do. Uh, I can do a little bit of a railway diorama. So my focus shifted to the viaduct board, which is always one of my favourite scenes on the original Colestale, although I don't think I did it as much justice um, as perhaps I could have done. So if we focus in on here, you can see it's just the section highlighted there it's four foot by 18 inches and all it's got on it really is a river and a viaduct so that was the planning that i'd done um and that was the only real plan i had is i knew it was four foot 18 inches and i had a viaduct on it so after a lot of 3d cad work on fusion 360 uh whilst i was actually away with work um i came up with this design out of 12 mil ply uh, with a six mil ply top and that's what I uh, made up when I got to my parents' house. I had everything delivered there in advance, so it basically meant hit the ground running. I got to my parents' house. Uh, my partner was actually away doing some other stuff, so I was basically just alone with my parents, and my dad had a knee replacement, so we couldn't really get up so much other than potter about the house. So put together this plywood baseboard. I then made a Will's Viaduct kit, uh, painted and weathered that all up, and I put some scenery in using foam to make the landscape and there you can see, this is where I left it when I left my parents' house. Um, there will be a video coming out on this, so don't you worry if you want to see much more detail on this. Um, I've got loads of footage filmed, loads of photographs from throughout the process of building this. I thought I'd just show you a little bit of a teaser for what I've got up to. And this forms the very first baseboard of the future layout. Here you can see my nice little Class 08 shunter. That's got DCC sound, and I've painted and weathered it myself. Uh, yeah, really, really happy with how this has turned out. Okay, so when I returned from my parents' house, obviously I can't work on that baseboard as that's stored up in their loft. But not wanting to go away from the hobby again, no sooner than I'd done the first baseboard, um, 
I decided to buy some Merg electronics kits and build myself a new DCC controller. So now I've been sound fitting all my locomotives, I need a lot more functions than my original lens system can hold. And I looked at buying the new lens system, but I think it's about £450, and I, just, I couldn't justify that to myself really. So I went for a cheaper option, and also a more interesting option, because it meant I got to do a lot of work myself. Now there will be a video coming out on this, but this is my new DCC controller. Uh, so it's the Merg Can Command, I think it's called, uh, with a Can Cab handset, and it's also got a booster in there that puts it up to four and a half amps, which should be more than enough to power the layout. It's got some voltmeters and ammeters built in, uh, switches to turn off each power supply, and lots of indication lights on the front there. But I will be doing a full video on electronics, and I'll show you this process. I've also then been designing my own PCBs. Again, this will be mentioned in the future video. Uh, this is to join the two baseboards, or all of the baseboards together, to be honest. As it's going to be a really modular layout, um, I decided to design my own connectors to be able to join each module. Uh, and going between those boards, I need CBUS, which has got 12 volts, uh, ground, and two signal wires. Each section of track is going to have a bus feed, so we've got the mainline bus, the TMD bus, the storage track bus, and then just in the background there, the branch line bus. Uh, and all of those need some connectors. And then also I've got a 12 volt accessory bus. So what I settled on in the end is using 24 pin power supply connectors, as you find in computers, and this custom PCB I've designed that connects them up and there'll be more detail on this. In a future video, I'm going to say that quite a lot uh, in this video. I think this is just going to be more of a sort of overview of the stuff I've been up to, and you can see what videos to look forward to. If there's any video you want to see in particular, comment it down below, and I'll try and get that one edited first. Okay then, so probably the meat of this video, I mean, we're 15 minutes in uh, now as I look at my voice recording, but the bulk of this video probably is going to be the plans for the future layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the new track plan and compare it like for like, one for one, to the track plan I showed you about six months ago. So this is the track plan I showed you six months ago, roughly, I think. Um, it's the one I could find on my computer and it looks vaguely similar to the last YouTube video I uploaded. I was really happy with this plan, the storage yard I was really happy with. TMD uh, needed some work and the main lines were just a bit short to be honest. This is 12 foot by 10 foot. Um, which again, yeah, it's bigger than my previous rendition of Colestel, which I think was only 12 foot by 7 foot um, off the top of my head. Yeah, so it's slightly bigger. But I was thinking, if this is my dream layout, and I'm going to be building this over probably the next five or six years, if I'm building it one module at a time, uh, where, as I'm going to get time and space and money, uh, why not make it bigger? Um, I think I'm going to end up getting this in a custom shed or some sort of double garage or something. So, yeah, I expanded it to 17 feet by 12 feet. The idea being it will fit in a sort of 20 foot uh, shed sort of uh, deal. Um, yeah, so it's been completely redesigned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each board individually and we can see what's changed. So starting with the storage yard, this is the storage yard that I showed you in the previous video. And if you've not seen that one, go back and watch it and you can see my justification for each track. We've got the sort of branch line sidings up here. Well, they'll take the DMUs, loco storage here and the turntable. And then we've got plenty of sidings on each main line. But if we look at the modified plans, you can see there's a lot more track going on. Basically, all I've done is I've filled in this bottom bit of baseboard between the old plan. Uh, not to scale, by the way, these, these are the same size. In the old plan, this was all empty space, and I filled it in with load more extra storage tracks for overflow storage. I sort of realigned where this turntable fits, because that's going to be a removable module, just to aid in me building it. It'll also mean it can link to my TMD diorama, and I can use this as a fiddle yard for the TMD diorama. And then overall, these sidings are all exactly the same uh, in the loops here. I've just started to add the different block sections to automate the main line and storage yard. Moving on to the TMD then, this is what I showed you six months ago. It's nice and simple. We sort of reverse off the main lines into here. We've got some fuel sidings, some sort of head shunt, uh, and then loco storage down here. And this board here is the TMD diorama. And then if we look at 
the current plan, you can see for one, it's got a lot more detail fleshed out with the different scenery and where it's going to go. Um, but mainly what I've added is a runaround loop in the middle here. So you can see this is just an empty space down here. I've added a runaround loop with some kickback sidings that'll be on a refueling point. Possibly going to add an engine shed at the end here, but I've not made my mind up. Then these fuel storage sidings are slightly longer and the head shunt is much longer. Uh, this just allows me to shunt in a six, I think it's six fuel wagon train uh, and then split it up using this runaround loop and reverse it back into here and have my fuel tanks here. Just to quickly go through some of the scenery I've planned as well. Basically, we've got the TMD diorama. So that's the Backman uh, maintenance shed. I'm thinking of putting a coach wash here and using this as some sort of DMU coach siding. A main sort of office building with a gravel car park and a road leading out. Obviously the refueling point. And then to separate this from the nice countryside scene, we've got some sort of A road or motorway going over a concrete bridge here. Okay, so looking at the viaduct scene, this is the board that I've obviously showed you that I've built. Now, if we look at the plans from six months ago, this was only really, I can't remember, I think it was about six feet long. The main difference being now, if I go to the next plan, is this is much longer. It's now 12 feet. And you can see the board in the middle here is the one I've built. And then there's a four foot board here that's cut off and a four foot board on the other side as well. That's also been cut off. Basically, it's just much longer and I fleshed out some of the detail. So obviously we're going to have the river and the path along it, as you'll have seen, uh, and, and the woodlands in the background. And then running along the back here is the 3% incline that's hidden behind here that goes up to the branch line. On this board down here, um, again, it's slightly off your screen here. I'm going to have some sort of road bridge and next to it will be a house. Uh, I'm potentially going to model my childhood home here. We'll see how that goes, and I'll show you that in future videos. Uh, and possibly that church that I built for Colesdale will go on this board. On the opposite side here, it's just going to be sort of embankments leading up to that motorway bridge before the TMD. So here's a zoomed out view, and you can just see where I was talking about here, the road bridge after the viaduct. And the main focus here is going to be the branch line. Uh, so this really hasn't changed since the previous video. All that's happened is I've straightened out this track here, made it a sharper curve around here, and that's just allowed me to set these baseboards back a bit so I have access to these storage yard tracks. And it makes this three rectangular baseboards instead of having a rather weird shape for this board here. Still gonna be based vaguely on Kingswear down in Devon. I'm gonna have the water here with the track going through and then Coming into this station is nothing like Kingswear. It's mainly just the scenery that's going to be like Kingswear. Um, coming into the station where we've got two lines into platform, uh, probably a kickback onto a disused cattle dock or something. Then there needs to be some sort of goods yard or industry here, some reason for the branch lines to have remained open. Thinking it could be petrochemical related, or it could just be a sort of old goods yard that's not uh, closed yet. Then obviously over this bit of storage yard, we've still got a desk, but this time it's much bigger than in the previous designs. Okay, so that wraps up the track plan, really. Um, here's an overview again, and I'm really pleased with it. Some things that might change, I have been thinking about this section down here is a bit bland at the moment. It's just uh, two sets of embankments. I am planning on carrying on this road. If you see the gravel road, I'm going to pretend it comes up here and joins this road over bridge. But I was also thinking I could possibly add just the end of the platform here and pretend it's some sort of through station. Um, perhaps it could be, I mean, even if it's just a small platform that allows the workers to sort of get off the platform, up the stairs and then down this road to get into the TMD, that could work. Um, so let me know what you think. Should I model some sort of small station here? Obviously there is also the option I can the removable section doesn't have to be just a small bridge. It could be an entire board that folds up. So I could have more of a station down here. Uh, but I don't know if that makes the layout too cluttered. Uh, let me know what you think. Just finally on the track plan then, um, something else I've been planning uh, on RM Web with people who know a lot more than me is the signalling. Going for electronic signalling on the main part of the layout and then the branch line will have semaphore signals. Um, I just really like the look of colour light signals. 
and they were seen sort of in the 60s, early 70s, depending on which bit of the western region you're in and where had, where had had resignaling. Um, obviously, the earlier you go, the less common colour light signals were, and they're only in sort of major stations. Major stations have been receiving colour light signals since I think it's like the 20s or, or 30s. Some major stations got a version of colour light signals. Um, but anyway, discussing with a lot of signal engineers on R and Web, this is a plan we've come up with using three aspect colour light signals, and they're all going to be from absolute aspects. Uh, this signal here is a little bone of contention. This is a banner repeater. I've gone for the much more modern LED matrix style which is obviously much too modern to be in the 60s and 70s. I think talking to people on RM Web, the first one's actually from about the very end of the 80s, off the top of my head. Um, and that was with filament bulbs and uh, fiber optics. However, I just really love the look of the Absolute Aspects banner repeater signal. So I'm flexing rule one and I'm using one here. Obviously in the 60s it should be a white disc with a mechanically moving black arm, uh, but I'm going to use the LED matrix version. The reason for it to be there, um, apart from the fact I just want to use one because the Absolute Aspects uh, banner repeater looks really nice, uh, is because the main signal here is obscured by the hillside and trees. Coming out of the TMD then is going to be some interesting signals. It's either going to be three aspect with a call on and three uh, routing indicators in the original 60s style. So I'm going to have to scratch build these. Um, I am tempted to use the absolute aspects LED matrix again, but again, that's really far too modern. Um, if you look at signals in the 60s, it should be a filament bulb with a sort of screen in front that's got the root indication on it. I'll be going into all of this in a proper video in the future anyway, but just here's a rough overview of what we've come up with on RM Web. Okay, so that's the plan for the future layout. Realistically, it's going to take years to complete this, probably five or six years um, until I'm actually going to be able to set it up fully because I will need to have at least my own rental property um, or be mortgaging my first house. For sort of future upcoming projects, obviously I've done this fire project uh, for the violet board up here. I'm working on the TMD board, which is this tiny section here. Um, in the future then, what I want to do is make a turntable board to act as a fiddle yard for the TMD diorama. I want to make this next scenic board here to join onto the viaduct, and that will allow me to take photographs of full rank length uh, trains. And then once I'm happy with these two scenic boards, I'm going to put those into a sort of deeper storage and then we'll work on the branch line station, possibly as an independent layout with its own fiddle yard and stuff. And then finally, this will be several years into the future when I have my own property, we'll build the TMD because this takes up a lot of space and the storage yard and then link it all together and we'll have the completed layout. So future videos then, what's coming up? TMD part two, I'm going to try and get that edited in the coming weeks. I'm actually going away with work, um, so I'm going to take my laptop with me and edit some videos and try and get those uploaded. So trash maintenance depot part two, laying the track. Uh, I think there's some wiring in there and some soldering. And I can show you the very start of the scenery. It's basically just making a uh, laser cut uh, retaining wall. The viaduct part one, really looking forward to getting this video out and showing you the new techniques I've used both for baseboard building, track laying, uh, wiring droppers, ballasting, scenery work, using foam cutting and sculptor mold, static grass, all the old trees off the layout. Yeah, there's going to be heaps in that video. It might even have to be two videos. Uh, but yeah, the viaduct part one will be coming out at some point. Merg electronics and custom PCBs. So that's going to be talking about my Merg controller and my plans for the different Merg electronics I'm using on the layout. Hoping to automate all of the main line, some of the TMD and some of the branch line and storage yard. Uh, basically, I, I want to be able to pull trains out of storage from the storage yard and just let them run around the main line whilst I do shunting on the TMD and branch line. And then custom PCBs, obviously I've designed those to go in between the baseboards. Uh, so I'll show you those and how they work. And I'm also thinking of designing some other ones in the future, possibly some coach lighting circuit boards and some frog juicer circuit boards, uh, but we'll get into those in another video.
And then finally, rolling stock and loco plans and purchases. So I'll go through, I've got some fixed rakes I've designed. Um, well, I've taken from different magazines and YouTube videos. So I've got some plans for basically every single train I want on the layout. I've got planned already and there's an extensive list and I'll show you what I've bought so far and what I plan to buy and when. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I don't know how this edit's going to come together. I actually made the video mostly in PowerPoint. Uh, thank you for putting up with my absence for the past four months. I have seen my subscriber numbers going up and up, which is really good to see. I'll try and get around to replying to some of your comments and things as well. Thanks for watching. Uh, not sure when the next video will be, but I'll see you then.